Hi, welcome to the August weather forecast. The summer has been mixed so far, so will August continue in the same vein or can we expect something different? I'll start by taking a look at the short terms of the first week. This sequence is running from Monday the 2nd of August, 12 GMT. At the outset, what we can see is there are showers in parts of the UK and some of those are quite heavy. It's a fairly changeable picture. In the short term, not a great deal changes. The risk of showers continues. There could be some heavy, thundery and slow moving ones around. But as we go through the second half of the week, there are indications that it's going to be turning uh, more unsettled generally. This is 18 GMT on Thursday, the 5th of August. And by then, a nasty looking area of low pressure is pushing across the UK. That's bringing some heavy and prolonged outbreaks of rain. There is still uncertainty about the track that low pressure is going to be taking. It may push further southwards, in which case much of the UK would remain under more showery conditions, or it may just go a little bit further north, bringing those longer outbreaks of rain across more of the country. What's fairly uh, clear at the moment is that it will be an unsettled period through the second half of the first week, because even as that moves away, there are indications of further areas of low pressure being brought in from the Atlantic on a vigorous flow. So the ongoing risk of showers or even longer spells of rain right through until the end of the first week. The reason for that is the jet stream. It's displaced a long way southwards at the moment. This is the uh, forecast for Thursday the 5th of August. You see the streak coming across the Atlantic and heading towards southern Britain. Uh, ideally at this time of the year it would be significantly further north heading up towards Iceland. That would be leading to drier and more settled conditions, but at the moment it does seem to be stuck on quite a southerly track. With the cloud, rain or showers and the jet stream quite a long way southwards, all in all that paints a rather cool picture on most days. Uh, these are forecast maximums for Wednesday the 4th of August. I'm just using them as an example for the first week of a month. You can see values of 22 Celsius in southern and central regions bit cooler as you head further northwards. But when the showers come along or the longer spells of rain do, these temperatures will be taking quite a significant dip. So it will be feeling cool for much of the week, if this is correct. So are the other deterministic models supporting the scenario which that sequence based upon the GFS was showing? Well, just so we can compare it like with like, this is the GFS chart for Monday the 9th of August. By then we can see areas of low pressure remaining close to the UK. The Azores high pressure just starting to build northeastwards. Now that could be important later on, but I'll come back to it. The UK Met Office model run at the same time also shows the Azores high pressure maybe just ridging a little bit towards the UK there, but it's still quite a mixed picture at this point with the risk of showers continuing. The Canadian model Similar again, areas of low pressure close to the UK, the high pressure from the southwest just starting to nudge northeastwards there, but still, as I say, a changeable picture at this point. Finally, the European ECM model. It's a similar story. High pressure from the southwest perhaps having a little bit more influence, if this is correct, than some of the other uh, deterministic model runs were showing. So I think taking this, the animation and those deterministic model charts, uh, the static ones there at the end, put in all that together, summarising the first week, it's a changeable picture to begin with. Through the second half, there's an increasing risk of showers or longer spells of rain, and temperatures will often be close to or a little bit below the seasonal norm. So what's the second week of the month looking like? As usual, when looking beyond about a week or so, I'll switch to the ensemble data to get an idea of probabilities rather than the specifics. Um, so here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Across the top, we've got um, upper air temperatures. In the short term, they're often below or a little bit below the 30-year norm. But really, I'm, at the moment, I'm focusing on the second week, so from the 9th of August onwards. Now, the thing to notice is that there are an increasing number of runs there climbing up above a thick black line, which is a 30-year mean. So it's pointing towards a warming picture through the second week at the upper air level. Remember, these are at about 1,500 metres above sea level. 
Nonetheless, it's still quite mixed. Some of those runs are dipping back down and up from a 30-year norm. So there is quite a lot of variation in there. It's not a straightforward picture on this plot. Now, in terms of rainfall across the bottom, there's that wet period during the second half of the first week. But then as we move forwards through the rest of the 16 days, so through the second week, rainfall spikes continue to appear, but there are fewer. So it's it's indicating a drier, but not necessarily a dry second week in the London, the southeast part of the UK. Jumping up to Glasgow, so up to the northwest, up at the upper air, profile similar. It's close to or a little bit below average early on. Then through the second week, there's an increase in number of warmer runs starting to show there. Rainfall profile, though, is looking a little different. It's very wet uh, through the second half of the first week as well, but then it becomes somewhat drier as we move forwards. But there, is, there are more rain spikes on this chart than there were on the London one. So what it's suggesting is it won't be as dry in the northwest as in the southeast. There's a greater risk of rain as you head northwestwards in the UK. That would tend to suggest high pressure is going to be building from the south and having more influence across the southern half of the country. In terms of the two metre temperatures, the ones we actually experienced down at ground level, this is the 16-day data table for London. Each column represents the forecast maximums for one day from all of the runs in the ensemble. The thing to note for the second week is that the, there's, uh, the dark oranges there start to show. Those are runs which are forecast in between 26 and 30 Celsius. Right at the end, there's a couple of the pinky reds. Those are ones which are going for over 30 Celsius. So having said that, there is, it does look like a weak warming trend through the second week because there are still some cooler runs up there. The light, light, uh, light oranges, which are going for maximums of between 16 and 20 Celsius. All in all, though, it would suggest that temperatures through the second week are likely to be, are more likely to be above the average than below the average, and there are a number of very warm runs which are, which are appearing there. If we jump up to Glasgow, it's, it's, it's a similar trend through week two. Some of these oranges start to appear. Those are the, uh, the category down from the dark orange rows of the, 16 to, uh, the 21 to 25 Celsius blocks. So, uh, but, um, and most of the runs are in the lighter orange, which is 16 to 20 Celsius. So it's a similar trend here to London, but again, at a lower level. Rainfall. Um, I showed the rain spikes on the line graphs there. The data table, I think, makes the patterns a little bit clearer. This is the 16-day plot for London. Each column represents one day with all of the runs uh, being for that time slot being plotted in it. What it says is wet period, second half of the first week. And then the amount of light greys increases through the second week. Those are runs which are going for a completely dry scenario at that given time point. Nonetheless, there are still some of the darker greys which show uh, small amounts of rain and even a few purples and blues and greens appearing later on which are going for more significant rainfall. But the trend there is, nonetheless, it's a drying one through the second week. Jumping up to Glasgow, there's that wet period again in the first week. But then as we head through the second week, there is some light grey in the columns, but it's, there's less of it than there was on the London uh, data table. Quite a lot of dark grey, which is indicating small amounts of rain, but also more significant amounts of purple, blue, green, and oranges there, which are indicating uh, high rain totals. So, so it is, as I say, pointing towards a wetter picture through the second week in the northwest of the UK. I think it's also just worth taking a look at the uh, mean surface level pressure plots for uh, uh, first day of the 12th of August. This one's generated using the GEFS data. You can see here the 1,020 millibar lines cutting through the uh, southwestern England, 1,015 through central Scotland. So that is always high pressure, having potentially more influence across the UK by this point, particularly in southern and central regions. The European ensemble at the same time has a similar pattern. 
I think the 1,020 mm bar line is a little bit further north. You can see it here cutting through uh, the central parts of Britain, 1,015 there going across northern Scotland. So it's also suggesting the Azores high pressure will be becoming influential at this point. So there's a signal for somewhat warmer and drier weather to develop during the second week, especially in the southern half of the UK. But will that continue as we go through the rest of August? Well, to address that point, I'm going to use charts from the GEFS 35-day ensemble. But before doing so, I just wanted to flag up a warning message, which is the data used in these charts is 24 hours older than that used in the 16-day plots. And there has been something of a change in the last 24 hours in the 16-day output towards the signal for warmer and drier conditions weakening. So it's quite possible that will be reflected in the next update from the GEFS 35. But for, this, uh, for the purposes here, I've got to use the data which is available to me. So starting with the upper air temperature forecasts for London, see the purple line there, the mean of all the runs in the ensemble is above the thick black line, which is a 30 year average, and it stays there right until the end of the month. Jumping up to Glasgow, and it's a very similar story, just a little dip in the short term, but then the purple line is above the 30 year average throughout the rest of the period. Rainfall, so moving back down to London, the red line shows the mean of all the um, runs in the ensemble. And you can see the scale here is in millimetres, so 0.51. There isn't a great deal of rain showing up there, it's suggesting it won't be completely dry through the second half of August. There could be an increased risk of rain towards the very end of the month, if it's correct, and maybe showers at other times as well. But all in all, I think this plot is indicating a good deal of dry weather. Moving up to Glasgow, the red spikes there are somewhat taller. But even so, through the second half of the month, if this is right, the northwest of UK could also expect some pretty decent dry periods, I would think. To see why that might be the case, I think it's worth taking a look at the uh, 500 HPA height anomaly charts. These give a good indication of the uh, pressure anomalies which, which have been forecast by the model. You can see week three on this, which is beginning Sunday 15th of August, the yellows and orangey browns over the UK are indicating a positive anomaly, so higher than normal pressure is being forecast. Jumping forwards to the week four, which is beginning the 22nd of August, if anything, the signal for high pressure has strengthened. It's quite unusual to see that happening at this range. There's usually a trend back towards the average the further forwards that you go. On this occasion, the, the opposites occur. The anomaly has actually grown and there's a stronger signal here for higher pressure than there was in the previous week. So these charts are actually showing a strong signal for higher than average pressure during much of the second half of August. But remember the caveat which I threw in about the GEFS 35-day data. So to summarise, week one begins showery, and then the risk of longer spells of rain increases. There is some uncertainty about how widespread those will be. Temperatures are likely to be below the average for much of a period, and when the wet weather comes along, it will feel distinctly cool. Week two, it starts mixed, but there's a signal for it to turn warmer and drier, especially in the southern half of the UK. It may stay more changeable in the north, perhaps west as well. Then the rest of the month, confidence is very, very low, as is usually the case. But the signal at the moment is for above average temperatures, and it could become very warm at times, again, particularly in the south. Dry periods are likely in all the country, with changeable intervals still possible and being most frequent in the northwest. So there we have it. It's a mixed start, quite unseasonable at times during the first week, then a trend towards warmer and drier weather as we head through the second week and perhaps 
through the second half of the month. But with that uncertainty of a medium range output developing, increasing, if anything, in the last 24 hours, I think as ever, it's just important to realize forecast confidence really is very, very low in the UK when looking at this range. So thank you for watching this. I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.